One thing that I never really covered in my introductory series for Unreal or in any real other videos up until now is object references and class references. And for the most part, I kind of assumed that that would become apparent throughout using Unreal, but I do think it's valuable uh, for like at least a beginner's perspective to talk about this a little bit more and show you the differences. So if we go into any of my blueprints here, like the third person character, we can make uh, a variable of whatever we want. Let's call this, uh, for instance, enemy. I don't really have an enemy class in this, but whatever. And if we then try to make this like a actor reference, for instance, all of these are those like little beige colors, right? And that is because when you hover over them, uh, you can choose an object reference or a class reference or a soft version of either of them. I have a video specifically about soft references versus hard references that you can check out if you're interested. But today, we're checking out the difference between this blue version and this purple version. So we have an object reference. And I'm just going to uh, copy this over real quick. Uh, and we'll call this, well, Adam Zero is actually fine. And then we can also get the actor uh, and we'll make that a class reference. So what is the difference? Well, let's first and foremost take a look at what the default values give us. The default value for the object references uh, gives us something that we can't really uh, set a default value for. So let's do a third person character. Let's just pull that in here real quick. Make sure that they're both exposed so that we can actually edit them in the viewport. And now if we look into our uh, variable and we look for enemy, our object reference allows us to pick any actor in the level. And that will then be a like a pointer to that actor, right? So if we want to address that specific actor, uh, we can do it like this. So if you want to address this specific cube, whatever it might be, uh, now we have a reference to that specific cube. And if we want to say like delete this cube, we have a specific pointer to that cube. So we have our player and then we have like a handful of cubes and that variable that we have up here. So this one now points at specifically this cube. So this cube, not going to care about this cube, not going to care about. It's pointing to one specific object. That's why it's an object reference. It's referencing one specific object, even if multiple of that object exist within the same level. The class reference instead uh, doesn't let me pick anything from inside the viewport. Rather, that lets me pick anything from inside of my project file here. So my content draw. And that is because a class reference uh, lets you reference, for all intents and purposes, your blueprints. Not the blueprints that you've spawned into the world. Those are objects. Those are instances. Those have been spawned in. The blueprints themselves are classes and that means that they are more or less the template for what an object of this type should look like then once it's spawned in all that data can be changed but it's just like a bunch of default values as well as all of the events and functions that that object has access to and that might seem a lot less useful to be able uh, to have a variable of and that is because for the most part it is it's useful for a couple of things some things uh, require a class input. For instance, if I want to spawn an actor from class, that requires one of these purple inputs, because of course it needs to take in a class, a template, of what it is going to spawn in. You can't very well expect there to be an instance already when you're trying to spawn it in, right? It's going to return that instance, so that you can then reference it specifically, but as its input, it's going to need a class reference. So there we can do all sorts of stuff. And what is kind of cool is if we have an enemy actor here, we simply have a function called get class. So right now we can say, hey, whatever we are pointing to, spawn another one of them. And here we're getting a little bit into the inheritance and hierarchy with parents and child classes that I've talked a little bit about before in the actual Unreal introductory series. But this reference points to an actor. But as we just talked about, uh, we can point it at this specific cube. And this is not just an actor, this is a static mesh actor. That reference doesn't really need to know specifically what type of actor it is. It can just be any child of the actor class, which is pretty much anything that physically exists in the world uh, in the case of an actor. So this variable can be very, very generic. 
and it can point towards something very, very specific. Like this is a, uh, or rather this one is a third person character. If we had a object reference of type actor that was pointing toward this and we try to get the class out of it, it's not going to return to us just the class for actor. It's going to return the class for whatever actor we're pointing toward. In this case, that would be BP third person character. I can actually show you that uh, as an example. So if we uh, just go out of this class real quick and we make just a new actor real quick, we have a BP test here already. I don't know what it does. <laughs> we'll just make a variable called actor and we'll make that of type uh, object reference actor. And we're going to get the class from it. So that's the utility function here. And we'll just print out the name of that class and we'll do that actually on begin play instead. Uh, so this object reference is a actor. It doesn't really know anything more than, hey, I'm just going to be pointing to some type of actor. But now if we uh, put this into the world, so BP test, and then we probably actually need to uh, expose that so that we can edit it in the editor. We can uh, use this little pick thing to uh, pick the BP third person character. And now if we play, it will say BP third person character underscore C, underscore C is for class. If we instead pick, uh, for instance, this static mesh, it's going to print out static mesh actor. If we pick uh, whatever this is, I don't know, I think it's just a skeletal mesh actor. Uh, we're about to find out, it's a skeletal mesh actor. So. Uh, that is how object references can reference anything that is a child of the thing that they're trying to point to. And of course, as such, what we can do is instead of just printing out the class name here, we can, again, use the uh, spawn actor from class. And we will just, like, get the transform of this test actor itself real quick. And I'm just going to set up uh, a quick sphere collision here just so that we can let's have that not hidden in game so that we can see it and then on overlap uh, we will spawn that other actor that we uh, are trying to spawn in and that we're pointing to instead so right here we have that test actor that we just made and this is going to be the kicker it's going to spawn in a copy of that class with its default values so if we try to say hey we want to uh, spawn in this specific sphere, that's not actually going to do that because it did spawn in another actor, I can promise you that, but it spawns in a static mesh actor with a empty static mesh. It doesn't actually have a static mesh to it because the static mesh actor class, the template that static mesh actors are made from, doesn't have a default value there. Now, if we instead uh, try to spawn in another third-person character, you will actually notice that it's going to spawn something in when I overlap with this, because the third-person character blueprint does actually have default values, that being the value for the static mesh, the value for the materials, and so on and so forth. So it doesn't spawn a copy of the object, it spawns a new version of the default template for that and as one last little thing is when you have a class reference, you can get defaults from the class, the class defaults, and that just gets you all of the default values that that simple class has. So this will just get me an actor class if I specifically make a, a character, for instance, and I say, hey, this is going to be type BP third person character class reference. That's what we're talking about here today. You will see if I get the defaults from this, uh, we're getting a lot of other different stuff and this is important it only gets you the class defaults for whatever this class adds on top of its parent because of course the character class that we have here the third person character is also an actor but all of this stuff that we're seeing here isn't being added to this so this only uh shows you whatever this class itself adds on top now classes can also be cast just like objects can so we can cast this to for instance, BP third person character. This one is already BP third person character, so we probably should like get this generic actor class reference. And we can check whether or not that is actually this actor is a third person character class, whether or not, and then we can actually get the defaults and stuff like that. 
so that's a little bit of a quick overview, a little bit of a messy video, maybe, but there's just a lot of like little details that I wanted to discuss surrounding object references, class references, the difference between them, uh, what both of them are good for, what both of them actually do in the first place, because I kind of skipped out on that before when I was doing my initial Unreal beginners course, and I do think that this is important information uh, for beginning developers who are learning Unreal Engine, or programming in general, to be fair. This is just object-oriented programming uh, principles for you to learn to understand those. So hopefully it has been helpful. If there's any more questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments or otherwise in the Discord, the link down below in the description. And I'll see you back with the next video. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 